how that works in this video, we're going to show you how you can implement Claude 3.5 Sonnet into your Bubble application. There are lots of reasons why you might want to do this. At the moment, it's pretty new out, the uh, 3.5 Sonnet. It's the most advanced form of Claude or Anthropics Claude that there is. And as you can see, you know, outperforms uh, loads of other models, including Google's models and uh, GPT-4O's models in some cases as well. Um, so let's get straight into it and show you how you can implement this into your Bubble application. So first things first, you're going to need an Anthropic account. Uh, let me just make myself a little bit smaller. There we go. Um, you can do this just by typing in um, Claude a API. There you go, to the top of my uh, search. Boot with Claude, this one here, and it should take you to anthropic.com slash API. And from here, you just have to click uh, start building, create an account with Anthropic. Um, you just go through a few details, and then it'll bring you to a console that looks like this, or it'll look like this to begin with. Um, then you want to come over to API keys on the left hand side and you want to create key. And one thing you also want to do is you either want to claim the free credit. At the moment, Anthropic are offering, I think it's $5 free credit just for setting up the account, but um, you will have to add some credit as well to get this to work. The minimum you could add is $5, so hopefully that's okay. Um, so create key and let's call this bubble, uh, bubble test. I am going to delete this API key um, after this tutorial. So if you try and copy this one here, I'm afraid it's not going to work. Uh, however, I'm going to copy uh, this and I'm just going to put it in my clipboard. That's fine. I'll use it later. So um, when we've done that, we can go over to Bubble and start creating the API connection. So here we are in the Bubble app. One thing you will need is the plugin of the API connector. If you don't have it already installed in your project, you just go to App Plugins, search for API connector and find this one by Bubble. I already have a test in there, um, but I'm going to create a new API for the purpose of this tutorial. So I'm going to call this one Anthropic Claude. Okay, so the first step that we're going to need to do is add in the um, authentication. So essentially adding in that API that uh, we just created over on the other uh, the page. We're going to put it in the shared header because every single call that we want to make to Claude is going to use this same header. And for this header, it's a little bit different to um, some other models. We're going to type in x-api-key. And then the value is just going to be that code, uh, that API key that we copied. And that's going to be in there. Next, we're going to create the call. So I'm going to call this um, get response from uh, 3.5 sonnets. So then I'm going to make this uh, an action because I want to be able to use it in a workflow rather than just reference it as uh, part of data within Bubble. And I'm going to change this get to post. Then what I'm going to type in here is the endpoint which we need to send this request to point that you want to put in here I will put in the comments of this video or sorry the description either the comments or the description and it looks like this um, and that just essentially says you know where we want this API to go then in the headers we want to add a header of the anthropic version so if I can spell anthropic anthropic version it's going to go in the key and the value we want um, this version here and this doesn't matter too much because we are going to reference um, the 3.5 sonnet that we want, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you may notice that we are not putting in uh, the content type of which is application JSON. That's because that's now uh, done by uh, default by Bubble, which is nice, one less thing to deal with. So then we come down to the body. So in here, we are going to want to input um, several keys that we want to send over in this call to Anthropic. So first of all, is we want to reference the model. So it's very important that uh, we copy this down um, correctly, you know, absolutely character for character, otherwise it's not going to work and it's going to throw an error. So we're going to want to have the model, and the model in here is Claude uh, 3 hyphen 5 hyphen sonnet, and then the release, which is uh, 2024. 0620 is the latest release. Okay, let's close that off and let's create a new line. So that's the model we want to reference. Next is the max tokens. So this is the amount of tokens that um, the API is going to use when it gives you the response. So the max token is going to be, let's just say 1,124. You can move this up, move this down as you like, but I think that, you know, that's going to work well for this example. Um, then we are going to add a system 
So this is, if you've used the OpenAI uh, API, this is essentially the prompt that you want to give it um, as to how you want the AI to respond. So this could be, you know, please summarize these meeting notes. It could be uh, you are a math tutor. It could be anything. So for here, I'm just going to leave it really wide open and say you, you are a helpful assistant which doesn't really add anything, but it's a nice placeholder in case we want to come back and actually change this, which we will do in a second. So the next bit is the actual message. So what we're sending um, and uh, essentially what we want answered, the data we want to send to OpenAI, uh, sorry, to Anthropic and Claude. So the message that we want to put in here um, looks like this. We want square brackets and then we want the um, curly braces and we want to have roll and we want that role to be user. And then we want to have one for content. And then this is where we want to have our message. So we're going to put in angled uh, braces, angled brackets there. Now, what that is going to do is it's going to bring it up, if we click outside, down here. So we can enter it in um, on the back end of Bubble. So make this not private. And one really important thing we need to do, and I'll tell you why we're doing it in just a second, is we do not want the speech marks. In fact, I need a speech mark there. There we go. Have I missed any others? Nope, I think we're fine. Um, we do not want the speech marks around messages. And the reason that we want that is uh, we're going to use the format as JSON safe um, if, uh, modifier on the back end of Bubble. Um, so we want to make sure we do not have those in there. So I'm going to test this works by putting in here what is five plus plus oh, three? There we, there we go. Okay, now let's give it a run and let's see if it's working or if I've made any mistakes. Okay, it's taking a little bit of time. Okay, we have missed something. So what it come back with? Uh, messages, messages field uh, required. What have I done here? Okay, I've done message instead of messages. So hopefully that, all right, what else do we have here? Max tokens, max tokens. There we go. It really nicely helps you out if you've made a typo. Um, you just have to fix those. Let's see what we got now. Taking a little bit of time, which is a good sign that it's getting a response. And there we go. This comes back with a response here. Um, and we can see the bit that we want is here. We can show the raw data, which will show us, you know, this is our answer here. And how we're going to access that, which we're going to need in a short while, is going into the content, finding the first item, and then going into text. All right, that's fine. We'll save that. So we are now getting a response. Um, let's go over to the front end of Bubble and build a nice front end. So I've created this page with, you know, just a, a page content uh, group in here. Just we got a little bit of um, contrast. What I'm going to add in here is just a title. Let's say... 3.5 sonnet uh, test um, and let's make that a little bit bigger okay then we're going to add in some other text and we're going to say um, enter your message to Claude and let's add a little bit of spacing to this then what we're going to do is add a multi-line input let's add that in below let's make this full width and we're going to call this um, Claude Input. Not a fantastic name, but it will do for uh, for these purposes. Next, we want a button, and we're going to make it uh, give it a spacing, and we'll make it full width. And I'm going to call this one um, Get Claude Response Button and uh, Get AI response okay then lastly what we want is a group now there are several different ways to do this this is the way that i like to do it um because we're going to return a value when uh, back from claude when we send out the api call um, and we want that to be passed into a group where that's going to be passed onto some text you can do this with custom states as well but uh, i just like to do this with groups so we're going to call this response group and we're going to make this of type text and then we're going to go into the text here and we are going to make it come from the parent group's text. So whatever text we put into this parent group, it's going to appear in this text here. Very simple. Again, this is not a, um, this is not a tutorial on how to make a pretty bubble application, as you can see, but it is going to show how we can use Claude. So 
The next step, after we've got a very basic front end sorted, is we're gonna to go to the button and click add workflow. And we only need three things here. So uh, first of all, we're gonna have our API call. So um, if I type in Claude, you can see that it comes up there. This is my test one, uh, demo one. This is the one that we just set up. So I'm gonna use that one. And there we've got in the placeholder, which I used earlier. Now, what we're gonna do here, so I'm gonna get rid of that and we're gonna type for input. And there is our input field. So Claude input value. And this is where um, we're gonna to need to put in a modifier here, which is gonna be JSON safe. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna escape the text, that's a technical term for it, which means it's gonna put it in a format which is acceptable to pass it on to JSON. Because there are times where if you put in um, sort of like uh, speech marks, then that's really gonna throw off the JSON. So what this does is it puts it in a safe way, but it also puts speech marks around the end of the text, which is why earlier on, we did not want speech marks at the beginning of the end. So um, we've input that there, and that's all we need to do here. Then we're gonna say, um, display data in a group or pop-up and the group we want to pick is the response group and the data is going to be from step one let me move this over here um, and this is where we're going to need to select um, where the data comes from so as we saw uh, if we go back over to plugins um, we can see that in fact that's not a very clear way let me show it another way if we run it again it's within content it's the uh, we've only got one result here it's the first result and it's text. So, uh, thank you, we're gonna go back over here. So that means, oh, over this one, we want the step one, so the response, we want the content, we want the first item of the content, and we want the text, and then that's gonna accept it. And that's gonna bring whatever this responds back into that group, which is then gonna display it in that text, which you can see there. And then lastly, all we want to do is just to reset relevant inputs. Then, Let's give this a preview. Now, it's not a particularly good looking app, but let's see um, if we can get it to work. So let's say, what is uh, six plus 10? Get AI response, and let's see if we get a response. There we go, the answer to six plus 10 is 16. Very nice, not using AI to its fullest potential, admittedly, but we are getting that response. Now let's play around with it a little bit. I'm just gonna do one more thing before we uh, wrap up here. And that is, if we go into plugins, we can change this prompt here. So I'm gonna say, um, you are, oops, are an unhelpful assistant that always gives the wrong answer. Okay, so, now, if this is working, what this is going to do is it means that when we run this again and we say, what is nine plus 10? And say, get AI response. It should come back with not 19. Oh, that's an easy one. Nine plus 10 is definitely 42. This is well known. For, da, 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 da. So, so there we can see it is taking our prompt that we used and it's using it within uh, the call to go to Claude to get the response from Sonnet. So there we go, there we have it. That is a very basic overview of how you can implement um, Claude 3.5 Sonnet into your bubble application. Um, if you have any other questions, obviously there is much wider scope of what this API can be used for, then do leave them down in the comments below. And what I'll probably do if I get enough comments asking for a certain thing, I'll create another video upon that. Um, otherwise, if you've liked the video, please like the video. And if you wanna see more videos like this, then do subscribe. And apart from that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.